In the grand tapestry of history, there are tales that stir the soul, beckoning us to journey through time to the heart of the ancient world's greatest enigmas. Amidst the shadows of the uncharted, one name whispers of a daring odyssey, a voyage beyond the relentless waves of the Mediterranean, across vast deserts and over towering mountain ranges. Let us cast our minds back to an era cloaked in mystery, where maps ended at the fringe of 13th century Europe and ventured no further. What lands, what peoples, what wonders did lie beyond the edges of parchment and the realms of the European imagination? Imagine pressing forward into the fathomless unknown, traversing the Silk Road, that legendary artery of commerce and culture. One might encounter riddles of civilizations long past, unfathomable inventions, and sights that challenge the very fabric of belief. It is here in the year 1271 that a young Venetian ventures where few from the West have dared to tread, his name Marco Polo. Marco Polo's story is not merely one of travel, it is the quintessence of the human spirit's thirst for knowledge, an embodiment of curiosity that propels a 17-year-old youth toward the domain of the Mongol Empire. It's an escape from the familiar into a world where narratives are not yet written and history awaits the brave scribe. As we delve into this opening chapter, one must wonder, how did these early experiences shape the man who would become one of history's greatest explorers? And to what extent did his accounts shape the Western perception of the titanic and mysterious East? Within the sprawling grandeur of 13th century Asia, the Mongol Empire stood as a colossus of power and magnificence, a realm where the pulse of conquest and the silk strands of diplomacy weaved a tapestry of unrivaled splendor. At the empire's heart sat the court of Kublai Khan, a spectacle of wealth and wonder that drew emissaries from every corner of the known world. It was here, amid the opulence of the Khan's domain, that a young Venetian merchant named Marco Polo found himself in a position virtually unheard of for a European. Gifted in the art of language and driven by a boundless curiosity, Polo navigated the intricate labyrinth of the court with a rare grace. Appreciated for his knowledge of the Latin script, and the commercial hub that was Venice, Polo quickly rose in favor with Kublai Khan. The great Khan, ever eager to broaden his understanding of distant lands, recognized in Polo a valuable conduit to the cultures and economies of Europe. Under the Khan's patronage, Polo's unique status transcended the usual barriers of foreigner and native, allowing him an intimate view into the workings of the Mongol governance and lifestyle. Dates within the court blur alongside the tales of splendor. Kublai Khan's summer capital, Shangdu, also known as Xanadu, served as a seasonal retreat for the court and left an indelible mark on Polo's account, renowned for its palaces and pleasure gardens, a place where artistry and architecture coalesced into a vision of earthly paradise. Contrastingly, the winter capital, Dadu, present-day Beijing, was the robust seat of power from which Kublai Khan ruled over a vast empire and received dignitaries and envoys, vividly depicted in Polo's writings that detailed his 19 years at the Khan's court. These chronicles give us invaluable insights into the cultural exchanges and political maneuvers of the era, preserved through the eyes of a European in the midst of history's grand stage. As Marco Polo roamed the vast stretches of Asia, his eyes beheld the wonders of numerous cultures, technologies, and peoples, each carrying a story that would later enrapture the Europe of his time. Polo's narrative transported his readers to unfamiliar territories, lands where paper money circulated with ease, obviating the need for cumbersome coinage, which was a novelty for his contemporaries back home. The Venetian explorer witnessed the sophisticated manufacturing of silk, an art that had been perfected over centuries. Not only silk, but also porcelain, a delicate and translucent material that Europeans would come to call China after the country of its origin. He documented the grandeur of cities vastly larger and more populous than those in Europe, introducing his fellow Europeans to urban realms like Hangzhou, a magnetic metropolis that outshined any European capital of the time. Beyond technology and industry, 
Polo painted a picture of diverse cultures coexisting within the empire under Kublai Khan's expansive reign. Practices such as burning coal for heating, a method largely unknown in Europe, were requirements given the harshness of the winters. He delved into the tangibility of the multilingual empire, where interpreters were indispensably woven into the societal fabric, facilitating the dialogue between the myriad tongues of Asia. With regards to the people, Polo chronicled the Mongols' discipline and organization, their efficiency in governance, and their exceptional postal system. His accounts of the Kumis drinking festivities, an alcoholic beverage made from fermented mare's milk, and the prominence of astrologers and sorcerers in their society provided a stark contrast to the European way of life. Marco Polo's journey reshaped the perception of the East for his European readers. The dissemination of his accounts in the travels of Marco Polo, which occurred after his eventual return in 1295, fanned the flames of curiosity, leading to a European renaissance of exploration and appreciation for the richness of cultures beyond their own frontiers. His observations acted as the genesis for the Age of Discovery, which would eventually lead explorers like Columbus to new continents. In essence, through Marco Polo's eyes, a new world was unwrapped before Europeans, a world of ineffable diversity and innovation. The lasting impact of his observations is undeniable, setting the stage for a world forever drawn closer by the imperative of understanding and exploration, a legacy that endures to this day. After years of remarkable exploration, immersing himself in cultures that were once alien to him, Marco Polo finally turned his compass towards home. Accompanied by his father and uncle, he embarked on the long and arduous journey back to Venice. Though the return voyage was fraught with perils of the sea and grief as they mourned the loss of the great Khan, Kublai Khan, who had died in 1294, their spirits remained buoyed by the magnitude of their experiences. They navigated through treacherous waters, evaded pirates, and suffered the wrath of tempestuous storms, managing to return to their homeland in 1295, almost 24 years after their initial departure. Upon setting foot on familiar ground, the Polos were met with a Venice that was vastly different from the one they left behind, and so too were they, weathered by time, marked by the wisdom of the East, and carrying tales that seemed too fantastical to be true. These stories, however, would not remain confined to the memories of these intrepid explorers. It was during Marco's imprisonment after a naval conflict between Venice and Genoa that he dictated what would become one of history's most influential travel narratives, The Travels of Marco Polo, to his cellmate, Rusticello de Pisa. The Travels of Marco Polo is not just a simple travel diary, it is a compendium of marvels and observations. It featured detailed descriptions of the wealth, customs, and peculiarities of various regions Marco encountered, including those unseen by his contemporaries, like the court of Kublai Khan. This book serves as a repository of his realms, covering geography, politics, commerce, and culture. Through this document, Marco Polo painted the East in colors of marvel and wonder, gifting Europe a vivid portrait previously absent from their imaginations. The reception of the travels was, at first, one of skepticism. His accounts were so replete with incredible details that some dubbed the volume Il Milione, suggesting that it contained a million lies. Over time, however, as more distant lands became accessible and corroborated by other travelers, the worth of Polo's accounts was reluctantly but forcefully acknowledged. His book not only inspired the likes of Christopher Columbus, but it also helped redefine the European conception of the world. It spurred a hunger for exploration, sowed the seeds of the upcoming Age of Discovery, and set in motion the wheels of the Renaissance, fostering a profound curiosity about the world beyond the familiar. Indeed, the travels of Marco Polo lingered as a testament to the expansiveness of the human spirit and its innate desire for connection and understanding. As Europeans poured over his writings, they found themselves at the cusp of a new era, one marked by an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and exploration. 
Polo's homeward journey culminated not at the docks of Venice, but rather in the unbound potential of the countless journeys his words would inspire. Venturing beyond the footsteps of his predecessors, Marco Polo's odyssey cracked the door to the east and heralded a renaissance of knowledge, exploration, and trade. His vivid recounting in the travels of Marco Polo rippled through Europe, carrying tales of vast empires, exotic goods, and advanced technologies. Polo's chronicles, whether absorbed in the lofty halls of academia or the bustling market squares, ignited an insatiable European curiosity, prompting a new generation to gaze beyond the horizon. Notably, Polo's depictions of the Mongol Empire and Asia's wonders emerged against the backdrop of an intellectually starved Europe, soon to burgeon into the Renaissance. His travels laid a pioneering path that others would follow, often with a copy of his book in hand. Explorers like Christopher Columbus, seeking the luxurious courts of the Khans, inadvertently charted new courses to the Americas. It was Polo's reassurances of distant affluence that spurred monarchs to finance such expeditions, reshaping the world map. Moreover, Marco Polo's accounts had pronounced echoes in the realms of commerce and culture. His tales of the Silk Road heightened Europe's appetite for the opulent goods of the East, spices, silks, and gems, which amassed enormous wealth and transformed Venice into the mercantile epicenter of the world. His descriptions of paper money, coal, and inventive postal systems reverberated through European thought, leading to innovations that would power the engines of the Renaissance. The cultural perception of faraway lands once shaped by myths and legends took on a new dimension of realism and relatability through Polo's writings. His detailed chronicles persuaded readers of the shared humanity among diverse civilizations, sowing seeds of mutual respect and influencing diplomatic relations. Indeed, Marco Polo's legacy is a rich tapestry, interwoven with the intricate threads of countless journeys sparked by his own, each an essential strand in the fabric of modern global understanding. In conclusion, Marco Polo's legacy is unmistakably etched into the annals of history, not merely for his own incredible journey, but for the cascading effect it had on the world that followed. His life and work formed a nexus, a moment in time where the shared knowledge of East and West began an unprecedented exchange, heralding an era of discovery that propelled humanity towards the interconnected globe we know today. As we come to the close of our remarkable journey through the life and legacy of Marco Polo, we reflect on the indelible marks left by his epic adventure. From his humble beginnings in Venice to the majestic court of Kublai Khan, Polo's odyssey not only mapped the unseen, but it also paved roads for the generations that followed. His vivid accounts in the travels of Marco Polo drew back the curtain on the east, presenting a panorama of wonders to the Europeans of the late 13th century. The myriad of roads walked by Polo revealed a cross-cultural tapestry that was intricately woven with threads of commerce, diplomacy, and curiosity. His detailed observations of governance, economy, and society in the Mongol Empire provided a clear window into a world that was vastly different from his own. The diversity in landscapes, peoples, and experiences that he encountered challenged the prevailing myths, reshaping the European worldview. But perhaps the most striking aspect of Marco Polo's journey was its testament to human resilience and the unquenchable thirst for knowledge and discovery. It reminds us that history is a mosaic of individual steps that collectively leap towards progress. In the spirit of our opening teaser, it's clear that the true adventure lies beyond the boundaries of the known world, urging us always to explore, to learn, and to understand. As we ponder over Polo's legacy, let's carry with us the inspiration to embark on our own quests, however daunting they may seem. So, with the echoes of Marco Polo's narrative still resonating within us, we bid adieu to this installment of the Daily History Podcast. Each episode is a tapestry of tales, and today we added the richness of Marco Polo's world to our own. It's in these shared stories and histories that we find our greatest connections, bridging the past and the present in the shared pursuit of tomorrow's horizons.